Welcome to Mono Tutorials. In this session, we're going to be looking at spring bones. First, we're going to look at intro to spring bones. Then we're going to add some of the spring bones uh, before adding some colletic roots. Let's jump in. So springs bones is the ability to create a secondary motion based on sort of a physics based approach. So this is very good for things like scarves or hair, clothes or anything that you think would be added to your VRM that is extra animation but runs on a motion. Here is an example of one we've done before where I can move the ag set before. And as you can see, if I'm running around, the scarves will sort of fly about. Then I can use Collider Group in order to sort of make sure that it doesn't hit the character. So let's get into it. So if you haven't already, we need to import our avatar to edit. So if you haven't done that already, let's do this a quick overview. So first we need to go VRM zero, import from VRM go to our uh, VRM itself. And then we also need to create a prefab so we can edit that. So just place that somewhere inside your project. Um, in this case, I'm just going to override our previous version that I was working on. So when it does get imported, you have access to it down here, and then we can put that in our space. So basically you're importing your VRM into the space so that we can edit some of the things here. Now, as we're looking at secondary bones today, or spring bones, uh, all of that information is in the secondary asset here. For example, VRM spring bones. Now, most of it will come down to root bones to start. So for that, this will be the bones that you want to function as spring bones. So this will include the chains. So it's not every single bone, it's the root bone of the chain that you want to run as a spring bone. So in this case, we have these three here and these three here. So as I use Blender, these will be the armature and under the spine. So we have left scarf one, two, and three. And we have left scarf uh, four, five, and six. So I could have improved the names there, but they were better than the last version. Now, once again, you don't want all of them. You just want the root. So I'm going to go back down to here and then we have spine, left scarf and left scarf. So once you go back to secondary root bones, let's add two groups here. And then we want to drag and drop that and that. And you'll see these in here. So if we press play, go to scene, Select the asset, go to move. And then you can see how they move like that. Now, the problem with this, though, if I go this way, they will go through the body. So the second element of spring bones is what they call collider groups. So collider groups is basically an asset that the spring bones will bounce off of. Uh, so you can get some simple physics involved. Now, because we're creating an asset that's going to be in Web3, we want to make this as low as possible. So it doesn't process that much. Um, otherwise you will uh, slow down the whole space. So I would recommend probably one or two colliders at most. And I believe it is based on these little dots here. So we kind of just want maybe one big asset here that these will sort of bounce around. So let's do that. So let's go to our spine one, maybe this one, and then go add component and type in collider group. So this one here, VRM spring bone collider group. And you'll see that it will create this. Now this will be positioned on the bone, but you can, move this uh, to somewhere that's more in line with what you want to do. So I'm actually going to get rid of the camera and go back to the spine. And we're actually going to move that in a, in a little bit and then down mostly to there. And then I'm going to edit the scale a bit like so. 
Now, sometimes this may not be big enough, so be sure to sort of make it uh, big enough for the assets to hit. Um, in a previous build, I did do the, the collider group was a little bit too small and it didn't work at all. So just make sure to scale that up to see the effect there. So once we have our VRM spring bone collider group, and of course yours will probably look better. I'm having a bit of issues with my UI lately for some reason. We can go back to secondary. We want to add our collider group here. And then we want to drag the object that has the spring collider group on it here and then that will be draggable if it was something else that does not have it i can't do that so make sure that it is an asset with the spring bone collider group and that's basically it so if we go play go to scene go to the collider so once again left and right is good and notice how it sort of does get hit to the sides which is what we want I could actually move this one up. So it just depends on what you think is the best optimized approach for your specific case. So I'm going to just move this up to there and see how that goes. And that might part it correctly using one. So let's go to the object there. So note that, so that works a lot better in the front, but it's only using one, which is exactly what we want. So that's the best use case in mine. So of course, it's up to you, depending on your case. Are you doing hair? Are you doing clothes? Are you doing salves? Are you doing whatever? Tentacles has been an interesting case. And using as few of these collider groups as possible, as it will take a little bit of processing. And if everyone has a bunch of collider groups, that will slow down the space so one or two is probably the recommended amount. If I wanted to, I could play with some of these elements here. This one here has stiffness force 2.5, which looks pretty good. This one here is stiffness force at 0.1, which is way too slow. And stiffness for at four, which is the maximum is very stiff. 0.5 looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to go back to that one. And then, of course, you've got these other ones as well. So adjust as you need to. This one sets the drag force to 0.1, which means it'll uh, return back to its original base pretty quickly. So two elements that definitely affect how your physics is based is stiffness force and drag force. So adjust as you need to to get to the result that you would like. I could also make that a bit bigger. So these are the colliders of the asset. Once you're happy with the results, you can select your asset, go to VRM, export to VRM. It has all the information that we've done previously and then go export and save over our previous example. Save. Okay. Once you upload that to your public storage, like GitHub or Web3 storage, you can have your VRM in the space in Mona. Hopefully that helps. I look forward to seeing all your VRMs in the future and happy building.